What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie. I just stumbled over that, but I'm going to continue going anyways. Why? Because this is going to be a one taker. Um, I'm out for my morning walk. There's lots of traffic, uh, lots of big trucks. So we'll see how this turns out and if I ever do it again. Who knows? Um, I'm on a different route than I normally am and there's a highway not far from me. So we'll see. This is an industrial area, so <laughs> who knows? But I had a different idea planned for today. I got a different ready to, different video ready to go. But I got asked a question yesterday on Patreon and it just wormed its way into my head. And speaking of worms, there's worms everywhere. So that's why I keep looking down. Uh, it rained a lot yesterday and uh, I don't want to squish them. Anywho, uh, I got asked a question yesterday on Patreon and I can't stop thinking about it. And it was probably prompted because I have a pen sale up right now, which is still live. If you go check, I think it'll be my last video. Yeah, go check my last video. Um, still live if you're interested. But it was asking like, hey, you did a review of Parker Duofold Centennial a couple years ago, this was like five or six years ago. And you said you would never sell it. You are absolutely adored with it. You love it, but now you're selling it. Like what changed, what happened? And you know, it's just like, can you talk about stuff like that? And I was like, you know what? That is an excellent, excellent question. That sweater has been on the ground for like three weeks. Um, anyway. <laughs> trucks they're probably looking at me like the fuck is this uh anyway so yeah there are pens that i say in videos that i'm never gonna sell because i'm absolutely obsessed with it and then i do end up selling it <laughs> but usually yeah it's like minimum five years or more that i do end up keeping that pen which i'm gonna be honest is actually a decent amount of time for me Uh, it's actually a decent amount of time for me because usually I sell my pens after about a year or two. And I think it's because I'm in a different position than most people uh, in that I acquire way more pens than I think the average person does uh, just to the nature of this. So, oh gosh, if I never sold a pen, I'd have like... Probably close to like... 250, 300 of them. It's way too many pens for one person to have. <laughs> that isn't like a retailer, you know what I mean? Um, so I have to sell them. I have to give them away. I have to purge them somehow <laughs> because no human can use that many pens on a regular basis. And at one point I said I wanted to keep my personal collection down to 10 pens or less. Yeah, that can't happen. <laughs> Um, but I've been pretty good at keeping it between 20 to 25. Um, I always have way more in my collection, but they're in my like, I'm gonna sell pile. Um, so back to the original question, why am I now selling this Parker Duofold when I said I never would? Well, it goes to say that I have too many pens. Do I still absolutely adore that pen? Yes, yes I do. <laughs> Do I want to sell it? Not really. But do I use it? No. And that is the reason why I'm selling it. I still think that that pen is one of my favorites of all time. But I don't use it. I don't, yeah, I don't use it. I have so many other pens that like I gravitate to now. So I just, it needs to go to a home, it needs to get used. Especially because you can't buy that model anymore. I feel like if there's somebody who's super into like do folds and things like that, you know, and that wants the whole collection, th these pens are gonna get be harder and harder to get as time goes on. So it's time. Um, I did, yeah, sorry, I'm switching hands back and forth because, well, I'm out of shape and uh, my arms are like, oh, this phone is heavy. <laughs> Um, so when I did my sale just before this one and I had actually um, my Patreon only sale, 
I sold a couple pens Ooh, that hit right here. They hurt. Um, one of them was a Mont Blanc pen. I had two of them, so I kept one. And then the other one was my Omos, and it was the Ogiva Alba uh, Blue Cocktail. That one hurt a little bit because I bought that at the very first pen show I ever went to. But again, it's time. I just don't use it. I look at it, I feel sentimental fuzzies, and then that's it. Um, it's way too broad for me. It writes kind of like a stub. And I'm gravitating more towards extra fine and fine these days. I keep like, you know, going, moving the spectrum between um, fine, medium, and broad, like as my fountain pen life continues. But I, I just, it's time. It's time, it hurts, but you just gotta let it go. Um, so ultimately, yeah, my tastes do change a little bit. So that Parker Dufold Centennial, it was a medium nib. It is chef's kiss beautiful, but it's, it's too broad for me. Um, so while I absolutely adore it, yes, it is for sale. Uh, now, sometimes my tastes change as far as the actual like feel of the pen. Uh, so the Waterman Karina, I think it was called, the one that's like kind of boat shaped. <laughs> um, I don't really like that pen anymore. I still stand by everything I said in my review many, many years ago in that it writes really well. It does feel nice. Thanks truck. <laughs> it does feel really nice in my hand. I just don't love the shape anymore. It's like um, the Lamy 2000. A lot of people love it, myself included. I think it's one of the best. Some people hate it. They think it's boring, ugly. They hate the shape. <sighs> Tastes change over time. So, you know, I'm in my early 30s now. I started collecting pens in my early 20s. Just like life in general. <laughs> you know, things change. Tastes change. I, uh, I eat way more vegetables now than I used to, and I used to hate a lot of vegetables, like asparagus. <laughs> asparagus is my favorite vegetable. I eat it like six times a week practically, because I love it. If you'd asked me like seven years ago, wouldn't have touched the stuff. Tastes just change, you know? They just do, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's ultimately why I said I was never going to sell it in that video. I'm selling it now. It's just time. If I had all the money in the world, all the space in the world, all the time in the world to use my pens, and somebody else cleaned them, <laughs> would I sell it? Probably not. But I'm not in that life situation and I'm sure 99% of the people watching this video are not either. So yeah, <laughs> a little change to the, the schedule for today's video. Oh, yes, I'm approaching our uh, rockets factory. Oh. America, you call them Smarties. Oh man, it's just like sugar in the air. <sighs> so good. Anyways, hit the like, hit the subscribe check out the Patreon, check out the pen sale. Um, <laughs> let me know in the comment section down below if there's any pens that you never thought you'd let go of, but you have. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye. Okay, I know I said I was gonna make it one, one take, but no, not anymore. See, they're called rockets, people. Rockets! All right, my beautiful patrons, thank you all for your support. If you have recently supported me, uh, as a VIP patron or above, uh, and don't see your name, don't fear. This was recorded February 26th, so it will be there as soon as I can get it updated. So we have our ultimate human is Daniel Roddy. And for my VIP fans, we've got Elizabeth, Glenn Kelly, Joan Worthman, Brian Hunter, Aaron C., Luna Wolf Games, Bobby A. Bailey, Stuart Riley, Ute Cruiser, Victor Portugal, Bass, Wei Chang, Brian La, 
Lucas Bell, Aubrey Madcor, Marissa Calvo, Eric Lineman, Jessica Chow, Stephen Baldwin, Carol Lowry, Michael Simon, Sean Sturdy, Susan Barrier, Catherine Molina, Robert Myers, Bianca Andrews, Bill Pemberton, Jennifer Galfi, Karen Epstein, Lucy Peralta, Gretchen Peters, and DigitalTent.Tech. Uh, for those who are not VIP tier or above, it does not matter. I still appreciate that you're here uh, and that you make all of the difference. I appreciate you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye.